oh, this is the last time I'm ever going to tell anybody this. I've been telling people about my uh, my cousin for years, and I'm retiring the story after tonight. But have I ever told you about my cousin who joined the Navy? He joined the Navy because he wanted to have a girl in every port. But then they assigned him to a recruiting station in Des Moines, Iowa which made him very sad. So every time he went out on a date, he'd buy his date some wine. So instead of having a girl in every port, he'd have a little port in every girl. So last time I'm telling that joke, I'm retiring it. Okay. Okay, port is a fortified wine. Fortified wines usually have natural grape spirits and by natural, we mean unoaked. Uh, you know, sp grape spirits, the same thing that makes brandy. Brandy is a whiskey made out of grapes added to them. You may, you may say, but Gasper, brandy is brown and stuff like that. Well, brandy gets its color just like scotch and, and bourbon and other whiskeys get their color from the barrel. It's pure alcohol until it goes into the barrel and it's the barrel that gives it the color and the flavor and everything. So they make brandy without putting it in a barrel. They make alcohol out of grapes and then they add it, um, add it to the wine. Fortified grapes were developed to go on ships. They'd go on these voyages, they'd put all the wine in the barrels and the wine would go bad on these long voyages. And they discovered by adding the brandy or the grape spirits to the wine, it preserved the wine. So that's how it got developed. And if you look at where the most famous fortified wines come from, they're all from seafaring nations. Um, you got Sherry from Spain, Madeira from another part of Portugal, Marsala from Sicily, and, and Vindu Naturals from France. These are all other famous fortified wines and they were originally developed to go with sailors on ships. Now, if you walk into my total wine and you look at the port aisle, this is what you see, the port racks, this is what you see. And I didn't even take a picture of the top rack. People are extremely confused by port and it's kind of confusing because there's different types and that sort of thing. Um, um, how port is made. First, you start out and you make a non-fortified wine. You, you start making a wine like the Taruga that we just were, were tasting. And once the alcohol reaches about five to nine percent after a day or two, they add the brandy to the grape juice. What this does is it stops the fermentation, but increases the alcohol to somewhere between 19 and 22 percent. And by stopping the fermentation that early, um, the sugar has not all converted to alcohol. So that's how you can have a higher alcohol wine because of the brandy and the sweetness because the fermentation never finished. So that's how you can have port be sweet and still have high alcohol. For the short amount of time before the brandy is added, uh, it doesn't have enough time to get the desired amount of tannin and color extracted. So they have to develop special extraction techniques. Today, it's mostly automated, but traditionally this has been done by foot, foot, foot treading like you see in the picture here. And I'm gonna show you a little video of that as well. Let this guy come up. So this is an example of foot treading. It, it, uh, it, the purpose of it, it has a purpose. It ex, like I said, it extracts more color and tannin out of the grapes and skins and seeds and that sort of thing because you have a shorter amount of time to do that. So here's a little video of foot treading.
Okay, enough of that. So, yeah, the, the whole purpose of that traditionally was to extract more color and flavor. It actually served the purpose, but they figured out a way to make it fun. Um, here's a fun fact. Port became very popular in England during the 1700s, so many English businessmen started making port in Portugal. That's why so many ports have English names like Cockburn, Croft, Dow, Grahams, Osborne, Offley, and Taylor. Those are all English names on, on Portuguese products. Okay, there's, there's types of ports and there's styles of ports. It's hopefully this is going to make it a little less confusing for you. So one uh, style of port is ruby port. It's fruitier. It minifies the effect of oxygen, so they're only aged for short times in very large or oak or stainless steel barrels. When you age wine in very large barrels, you don't have a lot of contact with the barrels. These are probably old barrels anyway, so you don't get a lot of the oak flavors in the wine. Um, they do not benefit from bottle aging if they are not filtered. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So they're as good as they get. When you get something labeled Ruby Port, it's probably as good as it's gonna get when you get it in the bottle. It's less expensive. Virgins are a, a mix of vintages. Um, if it's not a vintage port, it's a mix of vintages. Now, there, then you have Tawny Port. They undergo long oxidated maturation in barrels called pipes. So they are, uh, they mature in smaller barrels for a long period of time. So they get more oak integration, plus the fact that you're um, maturing them in something porous like a barrel, you're gonna get a little more oxidation and a little more of the flavors that go along with that. The longer they age, the browner and lighter color they get. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. They're less fruity, more raisiny and nutty with flavors of coffee, caramel, and chocolate that you don't get in a ruby port. And they as well do not benefit from bottle aging. They're as good as they're gonna get once you put them, once you bottle them. If it has colita on, on its label, it means it's from a single vintage. Otherwise, they're from a, it's from a mix of vintages. Uh, they also make white or rosé ports, but we're not going to talk about them. They export very few of those, and we're not going to discuss those tonight. So fun facts. Uh, since 2003, only wines from Portugal can be labeled their wines as port. Countries that had previously made wines labeled as port, Australia most notably, now call their wines port style, tawny, or ruby. You really can't call a wine port unless it comes from Portugal. Now, there's different uh, uh, types of port, inexpensive port. I call this your, your wino port. You put this in a paper bag and uh, you, you drink it on the street corner. Port and or ruby, they're blends of wines that are one to three years old. They're simple, not concentrated, very low tannin. Tawny port and inexpensive varieties are one to three years old. They're less color than other tawnies. And how they make these into tawnies, they raise the temperature during maturation and increase the browning. So they sort of artificially made them tawnies. Now you may walk up to that those racks and see something called a reserve or reserva port. These can be tawny or ruby. They're considered higher quality than the basic version. Um, in order to get the word Reserva on your label, you have to be approved by a tasting panel. It, if it's a tawny, it must be aged in wood for at least six years. So it's going to have uh, a, a bit of the flavor, uh, a bit of the oak flavors in it and that sort of thing, and some oxidation. Now then you have your tawnies with an indication of age. If you've been up, if you walk to the, uh, the port rack and you see, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, year old uh, tawny, um, this is what you get. The stated age on the label is an average of all the wines in the blend. 
it's not that it, all the, 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 the blend is all 20 years old. You may have some five-year-old tawny in there. You may have some 35-year-old tawny in there. It's an average. There's a, there's a flavor profile and a color profile that a wine that age should have, and they blend the wines to that profile. <coughs> Excuse me. It must include a bottle date. Now, it's not a vintage. This was one of my uh, favorite 10-year tawny ports here, and on the back, you're going to see a, uh, a bottle date on it. Um, all tawny ports have to have that. Um, the reason for it is it's, it's good as it's going to get when they bottle it. And as time goes on, it starts to lose freshness. Now, they're really good for about five. They're really good for, you can't notice a difference, for the first five or so years that they're bottled. And then they slowly decline after that. So when you look for a port with an age indication on it, flip it over, see the bottle by date, and uh, you know get one as, as, as fresh as you can. Like that, it's not a vintage. It's just when they put it in the bottle. The older, the lighter. 10 years is a deep garnet. 40 years is a very light brown. And the ones in between are, are in between. The older wines are more complex with oak and oxidative flavors. Uh, oxidative flavors are flavors like coffee, caramel, and chocolate. And, and as they get older, those flavors kind of overtake some of the fruit flavors. So that's that. And then you have vintage port. This is a picture in a store window when Laura and I went out to uh, Portugal that year. Um, they only make vintage ports in years that the producers feel that they have grapes of exceptional quality. It has to be a really good year or they won't put a vintage on it. Producers must declare their intention the second year after the harvest and it must be bottled no later than the third year. So you've got this grape, you've got, you're, you're aging them for a bit, you, you taste the, the, the wine that's developing, you say, oh my God, this stuff's wonderful, let's make this a vintage. And then you have to bottle it in, in, in the third year. So they don't spend a lot of time in oak barrels and that sort of thing. It can, it, it can be aged in oak barrels or stainless steel tanks. But they, the, the key here is they must be unfined and unfiltered so that the microscopic particles that are left over or from the stems, seeds, pulp, and yeast are not removed. In addition to adding a lot of flavor and complexity to the wine, the fact that this isn't filtered, all these components act as a preservative, um, allowing wines to age for decades. I was telling somebody <clears throat> earlier, I had a, uh, a port from 1957, the year I was born, and that sucker has aged a lot better than I have. I mean, it tasted absolutely wonderful. And it's all these things that don't get filtered out of the wine that serve as a preservative. <laughs> Excuse me, the longer the wine ages in the bottle, the more these particles combine in flakes, making uh, decanting or the use of a strainer necessary. And the longer it happens, the, 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 the more fruit flavors come out too. As, as it ages in the bottle, tannins are reduced and the wines have less tannin. They're softer and they're a lot more complex. There's a lot more going on. They're expensive as hell, but if you ever want to get, get a, uh, if you can get an older, uh, vintage port, they're absolutely uh, wonderful to drink. If it has the word Quinta on it, it's from a single vineyard. <coughs> so these are usually a mix of different vineyards and that sort of thing. So those are vintage ports. Then you have tonight's wine, a late bottle vintage port. All the grapes are from a particular era. Unlike other ports, they're not mixtures of different vintages. The producer decides the uh, wines are worthy of declaring a vintage, but the deadline has passed. Remember, you have to declare it in the second year. They may taste it three or four years in and say, oh my God, I shouldn't declare the vintage. Or the producer thinks it's a better than average year, but that an outstanding year, then they'll decide to, to bottle an LBV port. <laughs> they're usually fine and filtered, and because of that, you can drink them when they're young. 
Um, you don't have all of the, the, the stems and the seeds and all the stuff that adds tannin in there when they're young. And most bottles have a bottled in here, just like uh, we talked about the taunty, the taunties. Um, and occasionally these are unfiltered. It'll say that on a label. And if it's unfiltered, then you can age it for a longer period of time. Um, it's according to the rules, they must age four to six years, usually in oak before being bottled. They're an outstanding value. These are uh, a fraction of the price of a vintage port. They're uh, slightly less than a 10 year tawny. Um, that they're, they're more than the, the cheaper port, the, the inexpensive ports. Um, I, I think they're dollar for dollar, they're some of my favorite ports. Um, mine is a 200, 2016 vintage, but it was uh, bottled in 2021. There should be a bottle date on the back of it that you should be able to find. So, and mine is 20% alcohol. 